For this video, we're going to film in the dark. Just kidding. Lights on, please. Thank you. But who turned on the lights? Hello everyone, welcome to Crochet Voodoo. My name is Lena. That beginning skit was fun to film, but it was a little bit spooky. So I'm glad to have the lights on now and we can get started with the first official podcast video for this channel. I wanted to say thank you so, so much to those of you who have already subscribed. And I was just really happy because it's only the first week. I'm happy for those of you that have uh, decided to watch my videos. Please let me know what kind of videos you would like to see. If you have already subscribed or even if you're new here, please leave a like or a comment below so I know that the content I'm making is being enjoyed and for me to make more of it. Uh, this is about a month's worth probably so I'm actually really behind but it might even be a little bit more than a month so lots of the show and a lot of spooky ones <laughs> which is always great because that's what I mostly enjoy crocheting and a lot of amigurumi as well. All of the information for these amigurumis, their pattern designer and all that will be in the description. It's just easier for me that way because I usually scramble trying to remember what belongs to who and what website went to and all that. So yeah, just look in the description if you'd like to see all the info. So the first project I have is this little Cheshire cat, little amigurumi. It's uh, one of the smaller amigurumis that I have made. It's uh, super cute, I think. <laughs> I get a little bit uh, finicky about how I do the faces on stuff because, I mean, it's the first thing that you see. So I was getting kind of impatient on the face because I had to actually redo it a little bit of times to get the whiskers where I wanted them and the uh, teeth positioned the way that I wanted. But in the end, I think it's uh, a really nice little project, Alice in Wonderland project. This was a gift for Mother's Day. And uh, there's actually a pipe cleaner in the tail. So you can curve it every which way. But I'm not going to mess with it because uh, actually uh, there's like several items here that I had to take away from my mom's room. <laughs> I felt really bad uh, <laughs> because then I had to mess up kind of her display a little bit. Her displays, she already like put them together and stuff. So I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was made with one of the skeins from Sugar Wheel that I was talking about, the Grape Jamboree. Another uh, project that I was originally planning on having for my room, but I changed my mind, was this uh, skull, a granny square uh, skull uh, banner, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was originally meant for the wall back there where you see my little uh, white ghost lady. Uh, <laughs> Uh, cross stitch there um, but it just wasn't working for some reason so I just decided that I would give it as a sort of Mother's Day gift. If you hear any noises in the background that is Link, my bearded dragon. He's moving around on his basking spot. No it is not a ghost. <laughs> this guy, this little shrunken head uh, that I put together. I actually used that pattern that was uh, the for the voodoo dolls back there, that pattern that I have made multiple times, and I just used it uh, to make the head, and I probably just made less rows, uh, less rounds or something, just to make it a bit smaller. This was originally meant to be a companion to my voodoo doll back there, the purple one, uh, but then I just decided against it and all I did differently to the pattern was because I just wanted it for the base of the head and I just added some yarn and just added it to the top as hair. I made just the X's and then the tongue sticking out I thought was fun. <laughs> Continuing on with the amigurumi, I have a pretty giant one here. This is Boris, <laughs> my Frankenstein amigurumi doll. He's pretty tall. I think he's something like 18 inches tall or something. This is my own pattern. It's actually a paid pattern on Etsy, in my Etsy shop right now. And uh, it's only like $5. I think it's on sale. I put it on sale for like $4.50. So 
So yeah, this is my main base pattern. I have one of those patterns on there as well, but I actually customized that pattern to fit him and made a different shape for the head. And I made like longer legs and I did it in different colors. So the only separate piece to this is his jacket because the rest of the clothes are actually done as you were making the body. So you just change color as you're making the body. And then I went back, which is uh, along the single crochet pose. You can see it's like for the pants and then the cuffs of the pants. I even made them for the uh, sleeves. That is of his shirt under there, if you can see that. And uh, here on top where his uh, collar is. And uh, yeah, I like the little jacket. And I, uh, this was a project that I was talking about in my yarn haul that I was trying to make the hair cap for. And I ran into that problem with that yarn, that wool yarn. I was trying to get a very like long uh, hair effect, but actually it just came out more like a fuzz, you see. But I was, I was fine with that. The, just the only really big problem about it was that the hair cap tore open on this and it was like right here like towards the front of the head and I freaked out. But luckily I was able to actually kind of hide it um, by hot gluing it down and then just uh, getting some of the hair to uh, go over it a little bit. So actually it's not really that visible, luckily. And then I spent some time just making a lot of details to the face because I felt like something wasn't quite right and I really wanted it to look very Frankenstein-ish. So I was uh, going back and forth with my mom about it because in the end I just, decided to give this to her as a gift because a lot of the amigurumis I make like I don't know what to do with them after I'm done with them so a lot of the times I end up gifting them to her because she she really likes uh crochet so so by her uh advice I decided to make more details for the face to make it more Frankenstein like and that was adding like these little strips of embroidered hair because again you know I couldn't get that effect with the hair to get really combed out and just do that naturally so I just went and added some more details to make it look like the bangs this big stitch along the forehead and I already had those like red cuts there you can see he's got like two of them and then um I added like the details so he had like a stitched mouth and uh, these little things, the little boat, boats, um, those are just made with pipe cleaners that I twisted around. I also made two beanies in that same color that was from the Sugar Wheel, the Saturday Sunday one. And I really enjoy this color combo. It's, it really works. Like, I really like it. I don't know. There's something about it that is really cool, really fun. And originally, uh, I was just going to make one beanie, which was like this one. This is like the standard go-to pattern that I uh, use for beanies now. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's it's interesting. So I was just going to stop there and just uh, have one beanie, but then I thought I would make another and I had enough scraps to almost finish it if I didn't want to make it longer. But in the end, I actually decided that these were then going to be gifts. Uh, they weren't going to be mine because, I don't know, I'm, I'm very particular in my beanies. Like, I, I don't know. I only have, like, two of them. And I keep trying to, like, make other stuff for myself that are wearables. And a lot of times they don't work out for some reason. Because I'm just super, super picky about, like, my crochet. I don't know why. <laughs> you ever get like that with certain things? Like, if, a lot of times if it doesn't come out 100%, I'm disappointed. Like, it doesn't come out 100% how I envisioned it that I just kind of get a little bit disgusted with it. And then I'm not sure if it's all that good at the end, all that great or anything. But I mean, I think it's cute. I just wish the pom-pom was a bit more stable. Like when you're walking around, it doesn't even flop that much. But like these small little things, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'll show them to like my mom and then she'll be like, you know, I don't see anything wrong here. I like it. <laughs> so she's, she's happier with the stuff I make than I am usually. The next project is one of my most favorites that I've done recently. It took quite a bit of work to make this one. It was very involved, but it was definitely worth it. I definitely recommend the pattern to those of you that like to work on amigurumi and maybe want a little bit of a challenge. Not that it's like super difficult or anything. It's just really involved and it uh, has a lot of payoff for it. it I think it's it's really detailed and fun. And that is Winifreda. 
I think I originally called her like Winifred, but actually it's Winifreda. And uh, I think that's fun, fun name for her. And yeah, I'm gonna give like some super up close shots of her because it took so much work to make her. She is very, very detailed. This hair, like, oh my goodness. It took so much time, like multiple, multiple hours just to do that, like several hours to do this because you actually had to untwist the yarn in order to get that effect. And then you could see that I used some fabric paint to make the darkened like eyeshadow behind the buttons, which kind of was a pain. Like I was procrastinating so much on that. I did not want to do anything with fabric paint, but this was for my mom and she wanted it. <laughs> so I wanted to make her happy and um, make it the way it was intended. So I went ahead and went with it. It took uh, various coats because I was being very light-handed with the paint because I mean it's permanent I did not want to make a mistake because there would be no way for me to remove it basically and Yeah, and all these pieces are like you make them separately Like this uh, white piece and this red piece and this gray one here like you make that all separately And then also these like polka dots. I had to make with lightweight uh, yarn So it didn't come out so bulky so, and then after you make them separately, then you end up having to uh, sew them on and then you sew, you embroider all these little details. The only thing that wasn't actually a separate piece was this dress. Like the dre the black dress itself was uh, crocheted on there uh, from after the main body of the doll was done. So actually you are crocheting single crochets around the posts and then you you go from there and it just flows out. <laughs> Here's the, the legs. They're actually in different colors too. There's stripes there. <coughs> For the longest time, I've been wanting to have a project bag that was actually big enough to fit my projects in. You can see that I have a bag back there that is technically a project bag, but it's for my older whips. I have some bigger whips back there that pretty much take up the whole thing and there's only really a small little section of the top for new projects so i needed a whole new project bag to fit at least one new current whip and that's what i'm trying to stick with a little bit more now so here is the finished project bag that i made it's pretty big just like how i like it i was so satisfied after this because it was finally finally big enough to store all that yarn and the project itself and my little notions pouch which is in here and i'll show you in a second but i love the color uh i used up two skeins of grape jamboree and i also used just some extra yarn that i had in my stash for that not quite black color it was dark heather gray from soft and sleek so i i liked that i was able to use that up because i have so much of that yarn stash i was originally going to use it for making a cardigan but I just quickly lost interest in that and I decided to just leave it alone and just use it whenever I can to use it up for things like this that are just for accents on it basically. So here, this is interesting because this is, I think this is the front of the bag. You can see, keep keep in mind those colors there, right? Take a good look. And then now look at the back. There's actually a major difference for this because the colors from one skein to the other, see if you see that, do you see there's a difference there? Like there's a difference in how dark and how like light versus each other uh, they are. And they're the same color, the same color, um, Grape Jamboree from Sugar Wheel. The straps are just crocheted separately. I didn't sew them on because I find that when I try to do that, it doesn't come out very nice because I'm not the best at my sewing. So I just decided to sew on some buttons and then just attach the straps that way. And if for some reason I ever wanted to uh, get rid of the straps, I could and then just have a little detail of some buttons. So there's two on the back as well. But the really fun thing about this, besides the little ruffle border that naturally happened because of this pattern. Here, this is actually the front of the bag. It's a zipper bag. Yeah, I had a old old zipper in my stash, black zipper, um, that just happened to be like the perfect length for this bag. And then there's a lining. 
I'm very happy with that. Like at first I was worried about that it would be too contrasting to this bag that it wouldn't match because you know this the outside of the bag doesn't have any blue in it but I think actually it works I it, it makes a difference you can see I have just a lot of my yarn in there that's my project that I'm working on right now that is a amigurumi designing vlog um that I'm in the process of editing and putting together it's not done yet nearly done yet but it's in there and here is the pouch that I'm using. So you'll see this in other videos that I made this little pouch. So this is the next project that I have. I made this, I think, before that one because I was getting tired of all my stuff going missing when I'm working on stuff. This is like basic stuff that's in here. Uh, I give a little bit of a tour of it uh, when I'm doing my uh, Emma Groomy vlog. But just to show you real quick, it has lining. Uh, this is like little loop. It's made with velvet yarn, so it's super soft. I made myself a little walking bag because sometimes I go on walks in the morning and I wanted something that was just smaller than my big giant purse. So, um, and also for times it's not just for the walk, but like when I want to go somewhere and I don't want to take my whole purse with me. I just need a couple of things, you know, my, my keys, my phone, stuff like that. Um, I want to have something smaller. So I was just right off the kick of making that little uh, black pouch and I wanted something to match. I mean, I'm not necessarily going to be carrying around my crochet uh, accessories everywhere with me, but I wanted them to match together and I had more of that yarn left over. So it was really fun working with the velvet yarn and I used that same lining and I crocheted them together using the black. So I got this nice little border around the white there. But the thing I'm really excited about with this is the back of this because originally it was just going to be plain white back but I decided that I wanted to add an embellishment a little applique well not actually so little because it's one of the bigger appliques that I've made so you want to guess what it is I'll give it a little bit of time to guess what it is okay last chance all right it's a skull! Yay! <laughs> now it matches my other purse, um, which is actually not a crochet purse, but it has a skull on it. And now this one has a skull on it. And it originally, it had us have like actually these little like double crochet, treble crochet posts where there actually, you know, is gaps to show teeth. But since it's velvet yarn and it was quite thick, it's not really showing that much, but that's okay. You could just see the texture, which I think is enough. And it's more solid anyway, so. I like it. <laughs> so I was happy about that. And I, I take this everywhere with me now, almost. If I'm not taking my other person, I'm taking this. So there were a couple of projects that I forgot. And that was my drawstring bag there. Um, this is made with also like velvet yarn, but it's the sparkle one. That one's also from Yarn B. Like, can you tell everything like I purchased is like from Yarn B? But this is... Um, very very soft like this is the yarn to crochet with it is beautiful um, maybe I should take it down so you can see it like come on yeah I had to get up <laughs> uh, here it is um, this is to keep all of my yarn ends in when I uh, cut off all the extra stuff like when you weave in ends and stuff um, or even like when I comb out amigurumi hair and there's like a bunch of like yarn fuzz left over when I'm done with something, I just pop it in there. And then it has these long pom-pom ends. I uh, started working on this scarf. I have it all folded up and it's made with that. I love this yarn, the uh, print kind. This color is called Autumn Stripe. You can see, I'll see, I still see that I have my ends here. And that's because I almost, almost made it to finish this, but then, uh, I decided on making an actual like border around it because I wasn't 100% happy with the uh, just raw edge of the scarf and in the tutorial they didn't have it to make a border for it but I, I wanted one I thought it would look nicer so I just started making it just a simple single crochet border so it just looks better in, in my eyes <laughs> and yeah you could see how that looks so that's like what happens when you do the single crochet border there 
and then this is the side that does not have anything so this this top piece here you can see how that's how it looks when it's just a raw edge it, it's pretty long it's a pretty long and wider scarf i'll show you some of the baby clothes that i'm working on right now well actually it's been a while since i've worked on this project in particular this is annie i renamed her from lucy to annie i will have like a whole video where i talk about my composition dolls and the crochet clothing so for annie here i have finished her little cardigan hoodie whatever you want to call it and i also made the dress and i started putting those little uh ribbons to good use there so i no longer just have to crochet them now they're on there and I think it looks nice. It's, it's uh, has like this nice, uh, like, are these fans? Yeah, different fan look. It's in a very light pink yarn. The yarn itself is called Pink Lemonade. I wasn't 100% happy with the, the hood because it was more done like flat kind of, and then you're just supposed to sew it up on top. But I didn't want that because I was thinking probably wasn't going to turn out right, at least the way that I'm going to do it. So I tried to make it more that it was uh done like in the round or something but then i end up getting this strange like little poking effect at the top there and then i'm having to like reattach the yarn and try to smooth that out so you see there's like a little bit of like a dip there where it's not 100 percent circular or in line with the rest of it so you know i just started being kind of like annoyed by the whole thing like this is small it shouldn't even bother me that much um, does that happen to you? Like these small little things and it just changes your whole view about the whole project. And then that's part of the reason why it got put away in like crochet project whip jail or something because, uh, I just wasn't happy with the hoodie. So I was thinking about just taking it off and just letting it hang in the back like a regular hoodie and then just making her a whole new bonnet. I mean, she looks nice like this too, but usually with the babies, I like to give them bonnets because, hey, that's probably what you do with babies is give them little bonnets so their their head isn't cold as for the rest of her i just need to uh make her a diaper cover so we kind of cover up that uh cloth that's underneath when you lift up the dress and then i also want to make her some little booties uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video please let me know uh what project you are working on and what project you'd like seeing today again let me know what videos you would like to see in the future uh any ideas because those are always welcome so thank you so much everyone for watching i will see you in the next one